Are you struggling with analyzing a set of data that you have collected? Are you a student or a researcher who is just getting started with data analysis? Then you have come to the right place. The objective of this masterclass is to introduce the people who are just starting out with SPSS so that you can get started in a quick time frame. At the end of this masterclass series, you would be introduced to SPSS and would be made well versed with how SPSS works. As we move forward in our later videos, you would be able to do easy to complex data analysis. So, are you ready? Let's get started then with SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Hey guys, my name is Shardul, hailing from Shavash Tutorials and creator of shavash.co.in. I am also a junior research fellow at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Allahabad. So, given my profession, I use SPSS pretty much on a daily basis. I have been using SPSS for a better part of six years and have been teaching SPSS to undergraduates and postgraduates for the last two years. Before we begin this masterclass, if you want to increase your knowledge on any tech support, software or language, then be sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button on this channel and also the bell icon next to it so that you never miss an update. So let's begin. The biggest advantage of SPSS is that its user interface is very user friendly. This means that someone with very little to no knowledge about any kind of coding and software whatsoever can very easily learn how to use SPSS in a matter of days, if not hours. This also means that with someone with very little to no knowledge of how to make videos on online platform like me, can very easily create a masterclass for beginners. That being said, the biggest criticism of SPSS is also its user-friendly interface. Why is it so? This is because it allows for someone with very little to no knowledge of research methodology or statistics to run analysis without really knowing what they're doing. And as it goes in research, garbage in, garbage out. This is why in my masterclass series, I hope that by the end of this series, you would be able to not only run statistical tests on SPSS, but also interpret the output of the software. Now, there are a few assumptions with which I am starting this series. The first assumption is that you already have installed SPSS in your computer or laptop. If you don't have the software, pause the video and go to our description to download the trial version of SPSS and install it in your computer to get started. The second assumption is that you have at least a moderate level of knowledge of research methodology or statistics. But don't fret if you don't. I will try and cover as much as I can about the theories that I explain in this masterclass series. Now the version that I'm using is version 25, but you can use this masterclass series to run older versions too, as old as version 16 itself. Now, let's get to the screen. When you open SPSS on your computer, this screen pops up. This is where data is displayed in SPSS, similar to a spreadsheet like MS Excel. There's another window that pops up titled Output. Let me go there. This is your output window. The name self-explanatory. As any analysis you run on SPSS, its output is displayed here. Now let's go back to our data sheet. As you can see on this below window, there are two views available. The first is the data view. The second is the variable view. So data view is where data can be entered as I've explained before and variable view is where details about the variables can be entered and or edited. Now let's go to our variable view. As you can see, 
there are multiple columns displayed here like name type with decimals label etc i will try and explain all the things that are here so first is the name the name is where you enter the variable name now before entering a name i would like you to know a certain things that you must remember while naming a variable so for one you cannot use spaces in the name but underscore or camel case are allowed for example if i type name space of and press enter it says variable name contains an illegal character but if i go with an underscore instead of space like this it accepts and the rest of the columns autofill itself or you can use the camel case the camel case means every word has a capital letter before you could not use special characters like hashtag or at the rate in the names but now you can and one of the things that you cannot do in the name still is starting the name with a number like if we type 1a it says variable name contains an illegal first character so you can enter the names like this and if you want to clear the names you select the columns you go to edit and you press clear the column is emptied so let's try and create a set of variables that we are going to use in this video the first is id we type id and press enter it autofills the other columns then we use gender and we press enter then we use height and press enter so we're going to use these three columns so as you can see that three variable names have been created if you go back to the data view these three columns have been populated with their variable name id gender and height if you hover on them you can see the details let's get back to variable view so type is the type of the variable if you click here you can see that multiple options are given here like comma date or even currency so we're going to use numeric because numeric data are used for analysis this is numeric this is gender and height then we have width the width describes the number of entities you can enter in a in the data view then there is decimal the decimal places the two decimal places so we leave at that then there is label in the label you can explain what kind of variable is in the name usually you do not write the description of the variable but here you can write so we can write this is the identification of participants gender this is the gender of participants and height is this is the height of participants so label allows you to further explain your variable name then the next important thing is measure so measure this column explains the scale of measurements of the variable in use so generally scale measurements are usually of four types nominal ordinal interval and ratio in spss nominal is called nominal ordinal is called ordinal but interval and ratio are merged together in scale if you want to see measure there is nominal for nominal ordinal for ordinal and interval and ratio are covered in scale so i id is nominal our gender is also nominal but our height would be in scale there are other entries also like values missing 
columns role we don't have to get used to these because these are usually things that are used in advanced stages so let's get back to our data view now so in data view we have three columns and we'll try and enter some values in the columns so id is 001 002 001 003 and 004 this has changed into because there are two decimal places if we remove the decimal places it will go back to 1 2 3 4 and gender also we don't need decimal places so we'll remove the decimal places over there also height we do so we leave it gender 1 is male 2 is female we'll enter first candidate is suppose male the second is female third is female fourth is male this is where you can go to label and you can use values here so when you click here on values you give one as male and press add and two as female apologies female add and then okay go back to data and you go to this one in a diagram that says value labels and press on it what it does is it fills the values entered in the values column in the gender if you uncheck it we go back to the coded one two three four now suppose our first candidate is 180 centimeters long our second candidate is 156 uh, centimeters long the third candidate is 172 centimeters long and fourth candidate is 184 centimeters long so just like this we have created a database small database from where you can start your small statistical analysis now before we get out of here we would like to save the document this is usually a good exercise to continuously save your document so that if the file goes corrupt or your system crashes you have a restore point from where you can start the analysis because usually the data on which you work is not of four uh, rows and columns it is usually of 200 and 300 data of usually surveys or companies and you've done multiple analyses and if you don't save your document in a continuous fashion you might lose some very important information which you might not be able to recover after a certain point of time so in order to save the document we'll go to file we'll click on save so now it will ask us for a place where you have to save the document so i'll go where I'm, i have been using my videos and my documents i'll go to yt widths you can save anywhere you want goes to shavash tutorials and go to spss masterclass for beginners and we'll call this episode one data and it will save to dot sav and we'll just press save so now what has happened is your data has been saved at this point so if you lose your document after creating certain elements in the data set or running some analyses you might be able to recover your document to this point at least which is better than what we started with a blank document isn't it so yeah this is all it is so that right there is the basic introduction to SPSS. In the next video, we will begin by entering some real numbers and running the elementary analyses. If you have enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss the next video of this SPSS masterclass series for beginners. Thank you for watching. 
and i'll see you in the next episode of the masterclass series